I am a staff engineer in Mobi. Uh, shameless plug, we are hiring, so reach out to me afterwards. Uh, I'm here to discuss about HTTP 2. Uh, it's not something which is extremely new to a lot of folks here, but uh, while I was going through the RFC uh, a, a few months back actually, I came across some very, very subtle changes which I feel are going to revolutionize the way we look at applications right now. Uh, chances are that most of you have used HTTP in the last few minutes, uh, you know, and, and you obviously know what it is. So I'll not discuss too much about it, but just to give you an overview, uh, traditionally HTTP 1.1, a lot of them talk about 1.0, 1.1 started about in 99, and uh, it was like a 170 odd page RFC. It started growing, growing, growing to now, it's, I think it's close to 400. But it essentially covers the fact that you make a TCP connection, you send a bunch of headers requesting an asset, and the server sends you back a bunch of headers with the same asset, and they ask again and again and again and again, and that just keeps on going and going and going. So what we're doing, and we have a beautiful protocol to, called TCP, but then we are uh, kind of not at all utilizing it efficiently and just trying to find out hacks around it. Uh, say, for instance, you must be familiar with, uh, let's say, JS concatenation, you know, have all your JS scripts in single line, or you have a CSS, uh, what do you call it, spriting, which is used in games where you have every image in a single big image, and then you use CSS to you know, pull out chunks of it just so that you make a single call to the server. Then you, um, there, are, there are other hacks called sharding, where uh, let's say HTTP pipeline has a limitation of the multiple uh, connections you can have to a server. So what you do is you have C names to the server such that you can span out and you know, just bombard those C names and start getting assets altogether. But what essentially happens is that you get the head of line blocking problem where unless and until the first thing which you ask for hasn't come in, uh, you, you're just lying there dead. You know you can't go forward. And these things are very much obvious as soon as you start writing a, uh, an HTTP applications. So a few, a few smart folks at uh, Google came up with a protocol called Speedy. Uh, so Speedy essentially, uh, the overview around it is you use a single TCP connection and then you start having streams inside it. So essentially you don't waste the, 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 the crucial handshake moments to establish a TCP connection. Uh, how this started off was uh, Google's adoption to Speedy, uh, so the world's adoption to Google Speedy was not that much. And then uh, there's this consortium of group which is called HTTP BIS, that is HTTP2, BIS is, is two for Latin. They said, you know what, uh, let's just pick this up from where it is, that's Speedy3 draft, and we'll call this HTTP2 draft 000, and then we're gonna start from there. Right now it's a draft 17 which expires in August, and hopefully 74, RC 7450 and 5.1 would be, you know, up by then, uh, to make sure that, and the point that, the fact that we're using a 16 plus year old uh, technology yet, uh, they knew that, you know, HTTP 1.1 would be used for a few more decades. Uh, everything is sort of backward compatible, such that uh, uh, the URI schemes, you know, your HTTP colon slash slash, uh, FTP colon slash, slash, whatever it is, those schemes will not change. Uh, the default ports are honored. In fact, even the handshakes, which we'll see later on, are HTTP compliant. And, uh, and they made one smart decision, that is they'll, there will no longer be any minor versions. So it's two, and then there's three, and then there's four. There's no 2.2, 2.1, and so on and so forth. So how does the HTTP handshake look like? Um, so as I said, uh, in order to retain backward compatibility, uh, the, the browsers send a regular HTTP 1 request, 1.1 request, which with the upgrade is to C. Uh, this value, H2C is HTTP2 clear text and the base64 encoded uh, HTTP settings. So if the server is HTTP2 compliant, it will give 101 switching, it's a, it's a uh, empty line switching protocol uh, uh, status, and then the client understands that, okay, I'm talking to a HTTP2 server, then henceforth we'll start an HTTP2 session. If this is not an HTTP2 server, then the server will just ignore the upgrade H2C request and continue with a 1.1, you know, the traditional ask me and then I'll tell you uh, uh, request pattern. But then you will want to know how does it look like. Uh, fortunately or fortunately, uh, it is all binary. Yeah, so no longer telnet, go google.com port 80, get a slash HTTP slash 1.1, you know, everything is binary. You'll have to pull up your TCP dump or Wireshark or whatnot and then start looking into the protocol. The reason for going into binary was frames. Uh, 
so why frames? Uh, so frames if are essentially uh, the core unit of HTTP 2 H2 protocol. I just call it H2 shorter. So frames are the core units of H2 protocol where uh, it allows you to A, get rid of your textual spaces and all the uh, junk characters. And at the same time, it also allows you to kind of, you know, have a better control of how the scheming should be there. And the most important bit here is flow control. So uh, flow control, essentially, I'll discuss that further. It's, it allows you, uh, you know, to essentially utilize your streams much better. Uh, the, 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 the generic frame looks like this, which is like uh, nine octets, uh, 24 set for the length of the payload, uh, the type, frame type, the flags, R is reserved for your handshake and stream identifier, and then the rest of the uh, stuff is your payload. Uh, there are roughly around 10 uh, types of frames. The, the most important ones are header, data, and uh, uh, push promise, I'll say. Settings and go away are, you know, go away is like, uh, H2's way of saying, you know, get lost. You, you know, this is a wrong protocol message you sent. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Uh, so how does the request header look like? Uh, if you remember in the fir first frame when you said, you know, get something, something, and uh, I'll, I'll, accept, uh, I'll accept your uh, gzip, and, uh, you know, I am so-and-so user agent. Well, that's slightly changed. What has happened here is uh, H2 has introduced something called the pseudo headers which essentially says that these few things like the method, that is get, post, push, the scheme, HTTP, PS, uh, the authority, you know, your username, password, you put in the URI, the path, like get something, 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 all the status matches which you get from the response, they are, you know, something which will always be there. You know, in ev every, every frame which gets transferred, these things will always be there. So these are called pseudo headers which have to be there. They are in the binary format and they start with a colon and the name. You cannot go away with it. If you miss one, the packet is discarded. Uh, the cookies uh, are uh, then taken in as a, they're concatenated in a single string separated by semicolons, essentially, and it's the job of the receiver to, you know, split it with the semicolon identifier and take it forward. After this comes your regular key value. You know, whatever key value you tend to use, it could be uh, content type, content lint, uh, cache control, and so on and so forth. So they work as it is uh, in the traditional way. The best part is the HPAC algorithm. Uh, so Speedy was using deflate. Uh, HPAC is slightly better when ITF said, uh, decided to go ahead with this. They said HPAC is better. And uh, there are quite a few tests out there which show a significant improvement in HPAC in header compression especially. Now let this sink in a bit where we are saying that we are going to uh, compress the headers. Because for every request, let's say that you are doing a beacon request, the response is going to be a one by one GIF. But for that one by one GIF, we sent like, you know, 20 to 40 bytes of junk characters, your, your user agent and whatnot, and the server responded with the same set of junk characters, which you may be able to control, but are they still junk because I don't need it. And it's extremely inefficient to send them as clear text to both parties when, you know, the bandwidth capacity is limited these days, and the response time is something which you want. So by allowing compression, you are reducing the chatter of clear text uh, requests in the in the pipe, essentially. So this is on the left side is your uh, your traditional HTTP response where you said you know I'm uh, the server says uh, it's 200 OK. Uh, I'm sending you an image with the size of one two three bytes and here's the image binary. On the H2 format, it would be you know I'll I'll end the previous stream and this particular frame ends with my headers ending. And the status, as I said, the pseudo header is with the, two, uh, the 200 response type, and then the key values start in. This are completely user control, and then the data frame kicks in and starts sending you the binary data. So now comes the most uh, important bit, uh, which is streams. So imagine, imagine uh, uh, you know, a pipe which essentially has further subpipes in it, and then you don't need to have anything go beyond that particular uh, initial pipe. Uh, sorry for that analogy, but let's say that, you know, uh, if you were to talk to someone, you would rather talk them to them once and have all your questions answered rather than, you know, keep going to that person again and again for every question you have. So streams allow you to have uh, bi-directional, concurrent, unilateral, uh, Sub, uh, what you call, sub channels within a single TCP connection. Uh, this is extremely efficient when you're talking about uh, an average web page which has like say 52 and or 80 uh, you know, assets in it. Uh, imagine uh, if you guys have ever you know, uh, opened the developer mode of your browser, you'd see a bunch of requests going into your target website. 
most of them, most of those requests are uh, unique TCP connections. Now, this just this just is plain inefficient to me. So streams allow you to you know get away from that. They said, okay, you have already established a TCP connection, and then let's have these concurrent questions getting asked and be, being answered with. And the the good thing about uh, I mentioned flow control. So here, when you say you have streams. And flow control ensures that you, none of the streams take precedence over the other in terms of uh, capacity. So you don't have like a huge stream which is coming with a big window update and then just blocking the other streams. No, flow controls make sure that you know those streams are aligned with the uh, uh, settings which you have set earlier. Uh, so this is like a small diagram which shows that you have a single connection now and then uh, you have two streams here. Stream one and stream two, they are both concurrent. So uh, right now they're not dependent on one another. The client has asked two separate concurrent requests to the server, and each of them is being answered individually. Uh, what what's uh, unique here is the stream identifier. So S2 has said, you know, any client initiated stream would be an odd number, and any server initiated stream would be an even number, which we'll look into the uh, next slide. Uh, the another thing which a stream allows is a stream dependency, prioritization, and hierarchy. So on the left side, you can see obviously this is a dependency. You know, stream B and C depend on A. Fair enough. Now you introduce a stream D. Now stream B, D, and C depend on A. But let's say for some reason D has a higher priority. We want to give it a higher priority. So you can send in a mid-flight priority frame saying that, you know, give stream D three-fourths of the priority and the others one-fourth of the priority. Uh, so, even though it was established as a as a uh, uniform set of streams, you can mid-flight change the priorities of the stream. Or uh, let's say in the second example where you introduce stream D, and all of a sudden you want B and C to depend on D, then uh, and then D depends on A. So you can have this sort of a hierarchical uh, uh, priority and uh, what do you say uh, stream hierarchy set here. Let's say uh, for some reason D vanished or got killed, then B and C will not be orphaned; they'll immediately become uh, the childs of stream A. Uh, this would be, this will make sense in this example. Get some water. So uh, traditionally you have a web page which let's say requires two things, one a CSS file and a JS file. Now client asks for a, a web page in a single stream. Now server knows that, you know, the next request which is going to come in is for the CSS and the, J, uh, and the JS page. So what the server does is, it sends something called a push promise. It says, uh, I promise you to send a, uh, another file which is uh, in a separate stream, and I promise you to send another file which is in a separate stream, and here is this uh, detail of the first file which you asked for. So essentially what happens is the client gets the, uh, gets the details of uh, the fact that style.css and custom.js are something which I will be needing, and the server has promised to send me in a separate stream. So once I pass stream one, I will not ask for these again. Now this removes the need for the client to ask for those files at all. So what happens is uh, two new streams would be created where the server will push the file without the client having to ask for it. So imagine uh, the amount of latency this reduces. Uh, let's say you have 80 assets being loaded in a single page and the server sends a push promise for all those assets all in the, in the single request for the single page. Uh, you reduce about a uh, huge chunk of time, essentially. Uh, the latency reduces a lot, especially if uh, you, know, you, you really know that these are the statically uh, uh, included assets which I am going to send to the client. So what's the current state right now? Uh, well, actually what happened was, so Google said, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll discard using speedy, uh, we'll completely move over to H2. Uh, so they have, essentially, uh, they are on draft 17. Twitter is on draft 17. The bunch of sites which are using Speedy, uh, you can just download one of those plugins and figure it out. I think even RootConf, HasGeek uses Speedy. Uh, as for the application goes, Nginx and Apache web server said, you know, we'll wait for the protocol to be extremely stable and then and then we'll start adopting it. But until then, uh, there are, there's one very good, pro uh, uh, you know, uh, web service called ngstg2, I request you to check it out. It's written entirely from scratch and is to the point uh, in coherence with uh, the H2 RFC. Apache traffic server is also uh, in, uh, in compliance with H2. 
and Firefox and Chrome, obviously, you know, are now supporting HTTP2 along with Speedy. So why would you need this? Uh, well, for lack of a better word, just look at efficiency. Okay, forget the fact that you know uh, there is header compression, there is uh, possibly the other ways uh, to get more uh, you know juice out of it. And I apologize that I didn't discuss TLS because you know I won't be giving justice. It needs an entire talk in itself. But the fact that uh, we are using a single TCP connection to talk and get access for all the things which we need for from that server, uh, this uh, helps you scale a lot. And uh, in provisioning, uh, you know, network designing and all everything else becomes much more simpler and much more sensible. Uh, TLS, for a matter of fact, uh, imagine, right, you have 80 assets making an HTTPS connection to a server, you, you will essentially end up making dozens of HTTPS connections, be it to Akamai or I mean, be it to a CDN provider or your servers. But essentially, every those SSL TLS connections are expensive. Now, imagine you concatenate everything into a single TCP, uh, and you can, you know, for what it's worth, you know, have entire site served out of TLS, and you won't see any uh, significant reduce, reduction in uh, latency. Uh, so, so here's something which you could actually try right now. Uh, let's say that you, you you are a website which has a lot of thumbnails or whatnot uh, and assets, and you don't want to invest into something like ng HTTP2, then you can have your static content being sent through Apache traffic server, and let your clients talk to the ATS. Let the ATS be your uh, endpoint, a CDN endpoint, and, and and let that be serving via H2, and let the ATS talk to web servers via HTTP 1.1, and you know let them be at peace. This should significantly change how you serve your static content to your customers right now. Another off-the-shelf off uh, idea which comes to your mind is, you know, where you have designs where uh, uh, you have a backbone or Angular like client-side uh, MVC frameworks which make API calls to the backend. Uh, you can essentially just piggyback on the single TCP connection which you made initially. That's it. You know, you don't need to make uh, reconnect all the time you want to make an API call. And with that, I conclude my talk. Uh, it was a lightning talk, and I'm sorry, I'm not giving justice to this protocol, but I, I request you to go through these references and you know, have a glance at them. They are really, really interesting, and we are open for questions. We have time for one question. Yeah, I have a question about uh, the slide where uh, the uh, push, uh, push promise. Uh, yeah, could you yes. please go to the slide? Yes. Uh, I have a question. Could you please sh show the slide, the previous slide? Yeah. Yeah, this one. Okay, so now uh, uh, the client is uh, the server knows that client expects uh, a CSS and JS file. Okay. Yes. But what happens if actually it's already been cached in the client? That's a good point. So if it's already cached in the client, the client will not. It will say, uh, send the go away request or end stream. Essentially, it will not. It will tell the server that I don't need you to set up this stream. But uh, see, it already got the push promise, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, so client will now have to send two requests saying that, uh, oh, don't send me that. No, okay. So what happens is uh, when you when you get a push promise, a new stream is created. Okay. And the client says, okay, this is a, a push promise stream, and I'm gonna a server is gonna send me on this, but it'll send an end stream over there and there. So a stream two would be created, but then an, an end stream packet will go in, and then the stream is discarded. But what if you already started sending it? No, you cannot. So S2 does not allow the servers to initiate frames, uh, streams. The client will initiate the stream, but you can say that I depend on the server to send me a traffic on this. Okay, the server so will not send you, you know, server cannot bombard a client. Everything in S2 is client generated. So after getting uh, push from it, uh, the client has to say, okay, so I agree, send me. Yes, I agree that you will send me on stream two, so I, uh, here is the stream to which I'm initiating. Okay, got it. Thanks. And uh, if you remember in the previous slide, I showed H2C a header which sends an HTTP settings. That's where you can control uh, the max uh, concurrent TCP can, uh, frames and uh, uh, streams, sorry, and so on and so forth. Any other questions? Hey. That is something, that is the reason which is uh, kind of, you know, the, so essentially what happens is the application servers need to be aware of how the stream prioritizations are to be sent to the client. Uh, this is one of the biggest reasons the web servers like Nginx and all are not, you know, jumping onto the bandwagon of getting uh, this thing. 
that is why Apache traffic server is a simple enough CDN, it is not going to give you uh, push promises, but it is allow you to utilize a single TCP connection as you know, just use that. Okay. Any other questions? All right, cool.